Okay, so let's learn a little bit more about sound. In the previous video, we saw that sound was a disturbance of molecules in matter. In other words, when sound is made, the molecules in the air is compressed and then that compression or that disturbance in that matter was translated um, to the other molecules in the air until it eventually reaches a person's ear where the mechanisms inside the ear uh, translate it all to the brain which eventually interprets that as sound and that was more or less what we saw in the previous video however uh, let's just look at a few of the properties of this first of all what I want you to notice is that there's a distance between the compressions okay um, this distance is the wavelength okay this is a longitudinal wave okay it is a longitudinal wave and why do I say so because there is tension between the particles in the same direction as the translation of energy what do I mean by translation of energy well these particles are moving aren't they so they're translating their kinetic energy to the next particle and this eventually gets to the ear which translates it into electric energy which eventually translates it into sound. Now, if sound is actually a bunch of waves then it must have the properties of waves. So the first thing we're going to look at is the speed of sound. Okay, the speed of sound. Now, Technically what that means, or actually not even technically, just realistically what that means is what is the speed or the velocity at which this frequency is covering distance, okay? And the speed of sound in air, if I just were to, to make a noise in the air, is more or less 430. Uh, 343 meters per second okay now that is incredibly fast that is really fast I'll give a demonstration in just a minute okay however when we look at a more dense substance you remember in the previous video I said that in 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 space there's actually no sound and the reason why there's no sound is because there's no molecules to compress but you can imagine if there are more molecules per unit of space okay then these molecules are closer packed together which means they can translate their f um, energy faster so in a denser substance the velocity will be more so that for example if we look at water okay salt water um, has a different uh, velocity for sound but but let's just take more or less more or less almost a thousand five hundred meters per second that is how fast sound waves travel in water and then finally let's look at a solid in a solid obviously these particles are closest together so that if we look at steel at a piece of metal it is plus minus 5,000 meters per second. Well, let's just think about that. If I were to be on the one end of, of a sports field, okay, then I'll actually have to put almost three and a half sport fields next to each other. One person here releases a sound, okay, and the person on the other side of so this distance is 3,443 uh, 3, meters. It would take exactly one second from when he releases the sound till this guy receives it. Okay. So, what about water? Okay. So, water is one and a half kilometers. Okay. So, in other words, if we have a shark on this side, just just doing his thing, okay, trying to get some food, and something drops in the water 1,5 kilometers away from him, it will take him one second to hear it. Okay, and finally, if we were to take a piece of metal, 
Okay, he is a piece of metal. And that piece of metal, or it's a pipe, let's imagine it's a pipe. Now, it's not exactly correct, but let's say we have a, a, a length of pipe five kilometers long, okay, from, from one part of town to another part of town. And a person puts his ear to this five kilometer long pipe. And a person on the other side hits this thing with, an, with a hammer it would only take one second for this guy on that side to actually hear that noise. Now for noise to travel this distance in air will take how long? Well let's see, okay? Let's see how long will it take. Time is equal to displacement divided by velocity so we have 5,000 kilometers, uh, so 5,000 meters that we want to travel and um, we are traveling at 343 meters per second. How long will that take? So 5,000 divided by 343 is equal to 14, almost 15, 14 and a half. Okay, it will take 14,5 seconds for normal sound to make up the same distance than it would in one second if it traveled through steel. Okay, that's incredible, don't you think? Okay, well I found that very interesting. So that's first of all the speed of sound. Obviously it's fast. Okay, the next part we're going to look at is the frequency of these sound waves. In other words, how many, okay, frequency of sound waves, how many of these waves hit my eardrum per second? Okay, frequency is measured in Hertz if we're talking about per second. Okay, so how many of these waves hits my ear each second? Now, the, you, obviously your brain needs to register how many waves hits it per second. And the human ear can hear frequencies between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Don't you think that's incredible that your mind can distinguish between 20,000 uh, frequencies or 20,000 hits per second in your ear? That sound, that's incredible. Um, but uh, anything more than that would be called ultrasound. Okay, ultrasound. So humans can't register ultrasound. As a matter of fact, I can't even hear 20,000 hertz anymore. As you grow older, the um, there's just deterioration in the the mechanisms inside the ear, so you can't hear such high frequencies anymore. You can't interpret it. Um, however, small children, I think younger than about 11 years, will still be able to hear this. Older would probably not. Okay, ultrasound is what we call any frequencies that's more than 20,000 hertz. Any frequencies less than 20,000 hertz is called infrasound. That's called infrasound. Now, one more thing is that animals, for example, dogs can register up to up to 60 kilohertz. In other words, that is 60,000 hertz. And bats do a whopping, th this is incredible, bats do a whopping 200 kilohertz, 200,000 hertz. And, and as, as you know, that's how they locate their food and, and more about that a little bit later. Um, but yes, that's the frequency of sound, and now let's look at sound wavelengths. Okay, so sound wavelengths. Okay, so we just said that humans can hear between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. So what, are, what is the wavelength of these waves? Well, let's go work it out. We've already said that uh, this is obviously humans. Humans don't hear in water or in metal, okay? And um, obviously in water and metal we can register different frequencies because it's traveling at different velocities. But in, um, in the human ear, if we are listening in normal air, the velocity that we're working with is about 343 uh, meters per second, not kilometers per hour, meters per second. 
And I just want to also mention about this is that it's not exactly that because when temperature changes or atmospheric pressure changes, particles are closer together. For example, at higher temperatures, there's more um, energy in the particles. So at higher temperatures, it is higher. At lower temperatures, the velocity is lower. At higher pressures, it's higher. At lower pressures, it is um, lower than that. But let's say it is more or less 343. That's at about 20 degrees Celsius. What will be the wavelength of a 20 hertz uh, wave? Okay, so let's see. We have that velocity is equal to lambda times f. Nothing changes. It's still a wave, so that there's nothing changing in the formula. Where we have the velocity is 343. We have the wavelength that we're trying to calculate, and the frequency is 20. So let's see if we do that. 3, 4, 3 divided by 20 is 1, 7, comma, uh, 1, 5 meters. Okay, 17 meters long. Can you believe that? That is how long the lowest frequency. That's very low bass note. This is a very low bass. A low bass note has that frequency. And it's 17 meters long. That, that's massive. I think it is. Okay, let's have a look at at a very high frequency, 20,000 hertz. What do you think? Is it going to have a high or low um, wavelength, or large or small wavelength, actually? So we have lambda times velocity, lambda 343 frequency is at 20,000 hertz. Okay, obviously it is smaller because now we're dividing with 20,000 Okay, so 20,000, which means it's similar than dividing with 20, just with three less zero. So that comma is going to move three times more. So it's 0, 0,01715 meters. Okay, so that is more or less 17, more or less 17 millimeters. Okay. That's the shortest wavelength that we can register as humans, 17 millimeters long. And this is a very high pitch, no, uh, not a high pitch, a very, uh, a very high notes, okay, have, have this frequency. Now, um, larger than this is, or, or, or the range in between here is called the acoustic acoustic sounds okay the acoustic sounds all of this is just just additional you don't need to, to know most of this just there's certain things that you do need to know you need to know what um, velocity we can register in air you need to know the frequencies that humans can register you need to know that greater frequencies are called ultrasounds smaller frequencies are known as infrasounds you need to know that the sound how to calculate the sound wavelength given the information that's been provided and the opposite way around you need to be able to calculate any one of these variables in um, this formula given the other two and uh, that's about it that's about it that I'm going to say about sound for now and I think the only only thing I did not get to mention was amplitude so let me just mention that first the amplitude of this wave is remember what we said amplitude is the maximum displacement okay now the the more of this vibration the more this thing vibrates the in other words the further it goes away from its original position and goes back obviously the louder this is the the harder it's going to hit your eardrums okay so so amplitude comes down to the loudness Amplitude is definitely the loudness of the sound. The higher the amplitude, the, 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 the greater the loudness. The only other thing is pitch. Pitch you don't need to worry about. Pitch is really just the, the frequency that you hear. Um, it can be different than the frequency that I hear, but um, frequency is frequency. Pitch may be different. But that's it for now. See you later.